Hello and thanks for joining us for this edition of France in Focus. With the legislative elections looming, we've decided to bring you this edition from the French Parliament building, the Assemblée Nationale. Well, round one is just a matter of days away on the 11th of June. A second round will be held the following Sunday. And although these elections don't typically draw the same sort of turnout as the presidential race, as we're about to see, how people vote in this election will have a major impact on the president's ability to govern. Elections that are being abandoned by French people but are essential for the government of the country. Parliamentary elections in France are not organised at a national level like the presidentials, but by constituency. There are 577 in France who each send an MP to the National Assembly. Parliamentary candidates must win more than 50% to pass the first round. If not, a second round is organised with candidates having obtained a suffrage of at least equal to 12.5% of registered voters. This system favours the big parties, to the detriment of smaller ones who would prefer a proportional electoral system. Despite being more representative of the electorate, proportional voting brought about political instability in the Fourth Republic. It disappeared in constitutional reforms in 1962. The party's objective is 289 MPs, an absolute majority. It can then legislate without negotiating with any other bodies. Since 2002, abstention never stopped rising. It reached almost 45% in 2012. However, these elections directly determine who will govern over the next five years. The new president's party is only one year old and for the moment has no elected representatives. The National Front has only two MPs. As for the traditional left and right, they are more divided than ever. The victory of Emmanuel Macron, who campaigned as an independent in last month's presidential race, has turned the French political landscape on its head, bringing the decades-old dominance of the two-party system to an end. But have those candidates representing the mainstream left and the mainstream right ruled out giving their support to the new president? Well, the answer is no, not necessarily. Misleading the electorate, that's what these half a dozen candidates have been accused of doing. Some of them, like Luc Bellot, are representing the Socialist Party in the upcoming elections. But their campaign brochures are full of pledges of support for President Macron as if they were members of his Republic on the Move party. Voters don't ask whether or not I'm socialist because they already know that I am. The question they're asking is would I vote for or against the president's reforms? I will be vigilant and demanding, but I will back President Macron. Such tactics are not going down well with the official Republic on the Move candidate for this constituency. He's trying to take advantage of Macron's party's popularity, but voters won't be fooled. Other socialists coming under fire include former ministers such as Miriam El Khomri, who was the Labour minister in Manuel Valls' Socialist Party government. She's been accused of disguising herself as a candidate for On The Move by filling her campaign posters with the blue of Macron's party. But her former colleague in government, ex-health minister Marisol Touraine, has perhaps gone even further by not even including her Socialist Party's logo in one of her posters. Such moves are seen as a ploy to avoid suffering a similar fate to their party's presidential candidate Benoit Hamon, who came a dismal fifth in the first round. But it's not just the socialists. Nathalie kosciusko morizet is a candidate for the centre-right Republicans party. On her brochures, she highlights the numerous areas where she would back President Macron. There are some who say we don't want to work with En Marche at all. We'll vote against everything. That's a mistake. It's unreasonable and isn't what the French public want. It's not a responsible position to take. But once again, this method has angered the official Republic on the Move candidate. She wasn't chosen to be a representative for her party. She probably either took too long to pledge her support or she was simply unable to convince the party of her sincerity. Polls currently suggest Macron's Republic on the Move party will achieve a majority in the National Assembly elections on June the 18th. If this doesn't happen, the president will have big trouble passing reforms. 
Well, as we've seen, by voting for a president without an established party behind him, this country has taken something of a leap into the unknown. So what does the French public make of this rather unusual electoral landscape, not least given the huge choice of candidates in this parliamentary election? We went to find out. No. Il y en a trop, euh, mais euh, bon, je... pour moi, ce qui compte, c'est de constituer une majorité présidentielle. C'est trop ambigu, donc euh, c'est pour ça qu'on ne sait plus pour qui on va voter. On, on a bouffé de la politique pendant longtemps avec les élections présidentielles. On n'a pas forcément envie de s'y replonger tout de suite, mais euh, on n'a pas le choix, il va falloir aller voter. Le choix est assez clair, vu que je vote plus pour un parti que pour une personne propre Je laisse faire un peu les choses et j'avoue que je suis très attentiste sur euh, la question des législatives. Je pas forcément été satisfait du premier tour. Je vais essayer de me rattraper sur euh, les législatives. In population terms, Marseille is France's second biggest city after Paris, and it's a key socialist heartland. Well, the far left leader, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, is still on something of a roll following on from his success in the presidential election. And he's hoping he's also going to make strong gains there in this key electoral battleground. Marseille's Bouche du Rhône constituency is about to become a focal point of France's legislative elections, especially for those eager to see what's in store for the French left. Jean-Luc Mélenchon, a former presidential candidate, won 39% of first-round votes here. The political class is against me, but the voters are with me, so it's good. The man he's trying to unseat is outgoing socialist MP Patrick Mnucci. And faced with the Mélenchon threat, he's hitting the pavements. He knows it won't be easy. The fact that Mélenchon's in the running changes things. It might lead voters to think about whether voting Mélenchon is actually a good idea or if supporting him means they just waste their vote. Mélenchon rejects the possibility of any leftist alliance. He'll end up with 15 MPs. What he's doing is completely useless. Left-wing infighting that could well play into the hands of Corinne Versini, a candidate for President Macron's La République en Marche party. She's now on a mission to convince Marseille's residents that Mélenchon would be bad news for the city. I really hesitated before putting myself forward, but when I heard that Mélenchon would be contesting the seat, I decided to go for it. There's no reason why Mélenchon should be coming here to do his advertising. People here want to see new political faces. Although not everyone agrees. Jeanne Marty is a local municipal councillor from the National Front. Her party's presidential candidate won just 14% of votes here in May. It's true that it's a mainly left-leaning constituency, but we have something important to say. I'm from here. Voters see me living my life here. Because I think progress only happens when you're really able to listen to voters. It doesn't happen in offices. In all, 20 people are fighting to represent this constituency of Bouche du Rhône. The candidates here know they have their work cut out. We've all heard about draining the swamp as a campaign pledge on the other side of the Atlantic. And here too, in France, President Macron is promising to clean up French politics. Well, a new law is in the pipeline with the goal of stamping out precisely that, cronyism in the ranks of those who have a seat here at the French Parliament. France's political elite has been rocked by recent scandals. So for the new Minister of Justice, tackling a crisis of moral integrity in France's public sector is an urgent concern. He wants to restore trust in elected officials. Democracy is poisoned by suspicion. For so long we've seen the growth of practices that shouldn't be acceptable or accepted. First up, the end of family jobs in Parliament a prohibition on the hiring of relatives by elected officials and ministers. Up to now, a widespread practice. 59 senators are currently implicated, 17% of the chamber. At the National Assembly, the figure is 103 deputies, 18% of that body. But this practice was put under the microscope during the French presidential election, after former right-wing candidate François Fillon once a favourite for the presidency, became embroiled in a fake job scandal. 
Fillon stands accused of paying his wife and children around 900,000 euros of public money for work they didn't do. In another blow to the political class, the former socialist interior minister, Bruno LaRue, was forced to resign after a similar row. LaRue admitted to paying his daughters 55,000 euros over seven years to work as parliamentary assistants. But despite the public outrage, not everyone wants to see the practice banned. The head of Les Républicains at the Assembly says it's a step too far. Where is all this going? I refuse to get dragged into this populist debate, which consists only of constantly demonizing legislators. Legislators who would then be much more regulated during their terms, including a prohibition on consulting side businesses to prevent conflict of interests and a tighter control on their expense accounts. It's one of the flagship proposals put forth by this lawmaker. We get an envelope of 5,600 euros per month that's supposed to go to official expenses, but it's not monitored. We have to make that envelope transparent. Another imperative, a clean criminal record. Faced with public mistrust, total transparency is necessary, according to this Macron advisor. Things have to be clear, free of suspicion, free of calculation. We're not trying to litigate the past. We want to build a future with a sincere, objective offer and inspire confidence. The text also plans to prohibit more than three consecutive terms. The objective, to renew the political class and guarantee the integrity of elected officials. Well, that's all we have time for for this week's edition of France in Focus. We're going to leave you here in the gardens of the French National Assembly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon here on France 24.